guys, it's Autumn here, and today we're jumping right back into 500 drawing prompts. So the last one we did was uh, Fangs, Tattoo, Family Crest, and Spaceship, and today we are doing Mythical Beast and Spooky Tree. So let me just shift this over this way. And yeah, so I guess let's just hop right into it. Hey guys, voiceover Autumn here. So for these couple of sketches that I'm working on, I am drawing a Hydra for the first one, Cerebus, the dog that protects the underworld, and then just a very, very basic spooky tree. None of which are all too interesting or too complex or crazy. So there's that. I mean, I think Cerebus came out really cute. The Hydra's kind of weird and noodly. But these sketches are pretty weird noodly and just very rough this time because I didn't know what I wanted to go with. I mean, I think Cerebus is adorable and I want to draw him at some point now. But uh, this was not the day to draw that. I actually don't go with any of these ideas. I ended up drawing on my iPad and in my sketchbook for a little while trying to figure out what I wanted to do for this prompt. And what I ended up going with was something from Greek mythology, as the Hydra and Cerebus are except i went with a dryad so instead of a mythical beast i went more so with mythical creature and i i don't know if a dryad technically is a creature i know it's not a beast so i kind of fudged the wording on that but i just really had this very vivid cool idea of like a dying tree and then this really sickly looking dryad who's like m protecting her home. And that's what I went with. And I guess I put the book back. There we go. Um, so here's the line art for it. So we've got our sickly looking dryad and a really kind of cool, windy, weird tree that I drew. And I ended up going with a very simple color palette for this one, mostly gray and green. Um, with a little bit of yellow here and there for like highlights and things and that was it uh it's probably the simplest color palette i've gone with for an illustration but i wanted her to look green because dryads technically or most commonly in mythology have like a green like pale green skin and i wanted to make her look extremely sickly looking with green skin uh and then there's highlights on her face and on her lips that are just a warm gray kind of overlay and that's sort of the path that i went with was for this so it's a lot of warm gray on her to make her not look necessarily dead but dying and then her clothing is cool gray the tree is cool gray and then the rest of the illustration is pretty green and uh, a little bit of brown thrown in for just darker touches because i don't have really dark greens um, the darkest green I used for shadowing on her skin, and that's not even really dark. So I, I was working with a mild handicap on the green side of things because I have a lot more purples and colors that I use a lot of than I do greens. So that's something I have realized I'm going to have to build up in my repertoire of Copics is more green. So I took my time coloring her in, making sure she looked how I wanted her to and I find it funny that it kind of still sticks with this Dungeons and Dragons theme that I've been accidentally going with with a lot of these illustrations because she looks like she's either a goblin who is hiding out by her home or that she's a sickly sad dying dryad as my dog whines again come on Murphy get in here uh, so she looks like a sickly dryad or a goblin, and I think that works really well. And she's in this really creepy, swampy environment, and I just feel like the atmosphere comes across really nicely in the finished piece. In the beginning here, it's kind of disjointed and disconnected. They kind of look like two separate entities. I probably could have moved her over closer to the tree, but I... When I was drawing it, I wasn't thinking about that. I was like, ooh, this is cute. I'm just going to keep going. So I, I definitely need to put a little bit more time and effort into thinking about the composition of my drawings sometimes. 
because uh, it would have given a good scale reference for how far behind her the tree actually is because I wanted her closer to the viewer than the tree. Uh, I also kept creepy eyes peering out from inside of the tree. I go over them with a gel pen later to make them like shimmery and creepier than they are now. So there's that. And I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I've got a couple cool videos in the works at the moment that I am excited to share with you guys. Um, one of them involving some new technology that is sitting right next to me at the moment that I am super excited to use. And I think it should be a fun video to do. I have to figure out how I'm setting up the camera for it, but it should still be fun either way. Um, I'm actually hoping to get some suggestions from you guys as to what you'd like to see me draw in the next video. Because I've been drawing a lot of, not necessarily the same, but very similar concepts. I'm looking for some new concepts to work from. Uh, anything from Mystical Magical, which is what I normally do, Dungeons and Dragons. If you have a character that you'd like me to draw, you can go ahead and tag me in it on Instagram and I will most certainly do that. Just something to give me to do that would be kind of fun for you guys to see in the next video. Because I'm very excited to use my new technology, I just don't know what to use with it. So, uh, so for this illustration, moving back into the piece for a moment here, uh, I also did a like a different style of background, mostly because I didn't want to kill my markers again. So uh, the background is an arced green with a little bit of brown on the bottom. It's not until the end of the video, but I kind of wanted to talk about it. Because normally I just do flat color backgrounds because I'm not very good at doing super complex, complicated backgrounds. So instead of that, I did an arced uh, green background and then it's got little, um, oh, what's the, what's the name of it? Feathering uh, with the brown and then I blended the brown in on the bottom. That also just helped because the hanging moss on the tree which kind of just looks like a blanket at the moment, is a very light green tone in comparison. And it started to blend in to the background a bit. So I wanted to ensure that that was not the case any longer. So I highlighted it with a bit of brown. And yeah, that was kind of my approach for this piece. Uh, I hope you guys aren't too mad with me for ending up, ending up going in a different direction than an actual mythical beast and you enjoyed the illustration. I'm going to let the music just play out for the rest of the video here. I will see you guys next week for another video. Bye everyone!
Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to check out another one over there, and if you want to see the full playlist for this series, check out over here. Thank you for watching, and subscribe if you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone!